808 and Joysticks with Tom Stone and Tyrell Hayward Brown. Welcome to 808s and Joysticks, the show that bridges the gap between games, music, season with pop culture. I'm Tyrell, and joining me today, as always, is Tom. Yeah, um, second show of 2020. We're moving very closely to uh, a big occasion for us. This is our 49th official episode, um, which does mean next time out it is going to be our 50th, uh, which is a, a big sort of thing for us. Um, so we're looking forward to that but uh, something else we've been looking forward to for a long while um, ma- mainly you know me I think and, and you a little bit as well um, was Dragon Ball Z Kakarot uh, the new action RPG game from Bandai Namco uh, based around the Dragon Ball Z anime arc really um, goes all the way from sort of start start to finish in a way Um and while some people have been a little bit critical of the game with a lot of its uh, side quests and stuff like that be becoming quite com- repetitive um we have seen a lot of good reviews and i've heard a lot of good things about this game from fans of the series people that have already watched the show um so it means that like even if you know the the anime you can sort of get back into it and, and relive it again in a different format and that that's what I think is really sort of uh, important about this game and something that's different something we haven't saw before from a lot of games uh, what 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 are your opinions on this especially um considering how much you love the my hero academia uh, game and the story and that um yeah I, I think it's it's a really different game compared to to that game that game's like an arena like fighter whereas like this is seems to be like more of like a role playing um role playing sandbox type game um judging by the reviews because i actually haven't personally played the game which is i don't want to be too critical on the game um i know that's a bit sounds a bit weird saying i don't want to be too critical on the game even though i haven't played it because i have been critical on games that i've never played but it it just seems to be like one large scale Dragon Ball Z like game including all of the important points of this all the storylines from Dragon Ball Z so Mm -hmm. I wasn't really expecting too much and seeing as it's being developed by Bandai Bandai, Namco um, the largeness of the game and the repetitive nature of the side quest seemed to marry up with how One Piece's game was and how Jump Force um was released which seems to be like not a lack of content but finding it difficult to create a compelling anime game without using what you've already done do you know what i mean like i th- i feel like some people don't know how to innovate on that that type of series the anime fighting genre series where you know we've seen jump balls you know things could have been a lot doing a lot different within that game and um, it got really boring and really repetitive really fast and a lot of these kind of anime games do like the my hero game i really liked it because i got to play through the storyline but it did get really boring and repetitive and it wasn't that challenging um Mm -hmm. to play um this seems to be a lot more challenging to play and the people's real gripes with it is that you know it's a really good game but it's not a perfect game and We've never really got a perfect Dragon Ball Z game. Every Dragon Ball Z game has roughly been around the kind of same type of thing. And uh, Budokai, that was a fighting game. And, you know, I had the same missions. And you would get the same the same five missions over and over in every Dragon Ball Z game for the storyline. So I guess it's really nice to have something that's a little bit more story heavy and in-depth. And... Um, yeah, I, I I I I don't really know if I will actually play this now seeing what it actually is like um, just due to the fact that I've got Death Stranding and trying to finish Final Fantasy 15. Um it's another large scale game which I just don't think I'll be able to get around to, especially a story I already know so well. Mm-hmm. So if you are a person who 
doesn't have a lot of knowledge or maybe are new to the Dragon Ball Z series or need a refresher, as you said, you know, because it has things from the series in there, then I would say definitely pick this game up. I, you know, judging from the reviews, you know, don't respect the perfect game, um, but also try and take it for what it is um, at this point. Um, I think that, that that's all I've really got to say on Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Until I get a hand, uh, you know, I might see if I can get a little playthrough with it, um, possibly over the next week if I can pick it up. But I'm probably not going to for the, for, for now. Um, mm-hmm. How about how about you? Do you think you're gonna pick this up eventually, or are you good on Dragon Ball Z for now? Um, see, I've I've considered it. Um, I really like Fighter Z, which is obviously a different different style of game. And I never really played many of the other older Dragon Ball games. So it's probably better for me going into it fresher off that. Um, obviously knowing the story, but not having played the game fully. Um, yeah. A few people are saying this is like the the most uh, fleshed out or fully realized Dragon Ball world ever in a video game, which obviously makes yep. sense. Yeah, um, I I agree with that, which I will get to a point just um, after after your after your point. Uh, I've got a point about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the the only other things that people do say that like um, the combat could be you know, okay or maybe a little bit frustrating, but it's it's probably typical like jump forcey combat, which I liked. Um, but then there's the big issue of like the repetitive side quests, uh, which obviously you know if it's a 40 hour game well yeah to get through the main story but then if you're going to be repeating all this stuff to do the side quests it, it, it can get a bit boring like, the same as many games to a degree um but then it's also the thing like people have said you know you get good reviews but th- there's a quote that literally says if you've played a dragon ball z game before you've basically played this one and yeah it yeah. goes back to the point you made of people do find it hard to sort of innovate on this this type or uh style of game you know the the anime style yeah that, that that was that was going to be my point about saying how you know it's it's basically a game that's been done for many years now and uh mm-hmm. i don't really know why we as like fans of the anime or fans of the game or just you know people who just you know like to play different games and stuff like that just don't expect more out of anime games like and that is a a comment that i see here in the comment section of uh the review oh well this mass article about all these reviews where people are just saying that like the bar for anime games are very low and we never do expect much out of an anime game and i don't know why because there's so many more things you can do with an anime game, I feel like that has never really been explored. I think that one of the best types out there, and you can't even technically call that an anime game, and I think you'll agree, is um, Persona 5 did something really different with that type of genre. And as I said, I can't really call that like a straight up anime game because it's more of like a... I don't know, what would you really describe Persona 5 as? It it is a, a JRPG to a degree. Yeah, like yeah. It, well, it is a JRPG, but it, it's like you said, it's not based on source content that is very well known to a degree. And yeah. like, like you say, with all these Dragon Ball games, everyone knows Dragon Ball Z, but people like if it was just Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball, uh, you know, Kai or something else like that, people. People don't know that as much as Z because Z was around at a big time for, you know, anime and Western culture, where it was on yeah. Cartoon Network all the time. Yeah. Um, same same goes with Pokemon. Like those games, find it really hard to drift away from that anime to a degree because mm. that is their their story, their uh, ID, like it's their it's their identity. It's 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 familiar, um, which is why I think sometimes old series is like this get bogged down on its familiarity it's breaking the mold it's being scared to try and push the envelope on something i, I think sometimes and i know this is totally going off topic but sometimes i, I find that uh 
Dragon Ball Z and Star Wars can be compared in 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 a, in a really in a great way because there is an original type of Dragon Ball and then there's a newer version of Dragon Ball which was done after the fact of the original, you know, Star Wars coming out. You don't do you know what I mean? Like there was an original Dragon Ball, now there's like a newer wave and some people really dislike Dragon Ball as it stands right now. Mm-hmm. And are you, are you some people super yeah i'm saying with super and when they brought gt out and gt mm-hmm. didn't have like the original creator on it like people i loved gt as a kid i had no idea it had nothing to do with dragon ball but that was just going to show that you know the newer generation like me enjoyed gt whereas the people who watched dragon ball z and dragon ball really disliked gt because it innovated on an idea basically and sometimes it just doesn't work out and Whereas I felt like with Dragon Ball Z, there's been lots of innovation and lots of room to improve the series, especially through its game mediums. So I, I guess we can wait around. I, I'm just, I'm a little bit sad that it's come out to lackluster review because it was a really hyped up game when it first got revealed at E3. And I remember me and you being pretty excited because we thought what we was going to get a really immersive, in depth, like you on, Go, I, Goku series. Are you on about Kakarot? Yeah, yeah, I wonder about Kakarot. I mean, I mean, it's it's got good reviews. Like, it's got nine out of tens, uh, seven out of ten. Like, it it's good reviews, but I, I think it depends on, like you've said, how much you have a connection to the source material, these style yeah. of games. Um, this is probably going to be a game that, like, you're going to see a lot more people pick up just because it's a Dragon Ball RPG, and people nostalgic wise will be like, oh, "I remember watching that as a kid. I'll play that. It looks cool." Yeah, um, yeah. Whereas the people yeah, I, that I, I, are used to playing those games every time they come out are probably like, it's good, but it's like I've played it before. Yeah, I I I agree with you. Yeah, I think I think you're right about the reviews are high. It's just about how I'm see I'm I'm looking at maybe the comments and the way how like mm-hmm. you know consumers are um, reacting to the game, and it seems like a lot of you know people who wasn't really they're not they weren't really interested in it uh, as a whole so i do really think it's for a new market maybe people who have watched super who don't really know the story of dragon ball z that well meaning like the cell saga the freezer saga you know the boo saga you know the margin mm-hmm. you know the android so all those kind of things they don't really know that so like to play it through a game format like this is probably pretty good because i heard the game is roughly about 40 hours long so that's quite a lot of gameplay and story content to take in from the Dragon Ball series. It's, it's probably also uh, a quicker way to get through a Dragon yeah. Ball series than yeah, sitting yeah. and watching the whole anime because as everyone who watches anime knows it takes a long time to get through. Yeah, it does. It takes it takes quite a lot. I did hear you know, was, well, you mentioned something I, I just thought we would just throw it in real quick about um, Pokemon. What do you think about this Thirty pound or slash thirty dollar expansion pack to bring in the two hundred additional Pokemon. See, I I'm a fan of Pokemon. I, I think the DLC mm-hmm. looks good. It's the first time Pokemon have done DLC, but yeah. to to limit the Pokemon to bring them back, I I don't know. I I need yeah. to look more into it. See how much we're actually gonna get from stuff like that. Um, I like the idea. Well, I like the idea of bringing co op into it, but it mm-hmm. again it. It seems like they don't really know what direction to take, like we've discussed before, and people are crying out for like a Breath of the Wild Pokemon game, and it, what they're doing is is good, but it's just not it's just not it. It's just not what people yeah. want. Yeah, I I I agree with that. Um, coming into the new year, I've decided that I'm going to be a lot less aggressive towards Nintendo and Pokemon because I just want to see how these things play out now because. I've been telling everyone what was going to happen and no one listened to me. And even you as well, Tom, was saying that, you know, to a degree, like some of these things are going to happen and you don't necessarily agree with them. But, you know, you really like Pokemon, so you're going to give it a try and you're going to play the game. And I understand where you're coming from. And I still actually don't you know what? Because you know I'll be lying and saying that I don't attribute to the Pokemon Serious, because I still play Pokemon Go. I'm a very active user on that game still. I still attribute to Pokemon quite a lot. And I can't say that, you know, I'm not 
a problem as well. <laughs> I, <laughs> like, <laughs> so, like, it's not even being really mean about a problem. I enjoy Pokemon Go in it. So, like, I understand if people enjoy something and, you know, the content not is as great. There's so much shit on Pokemon Go which needs to be fixed and properly doing that. I, I could be here for days talking to you about the problems with that game. Um... I just find it a little bit sad because I don't think it's fair on the people who don't maybe have enough money or like the resources to spend another thirty pound or dollars on an already sixty pound game that had missing content in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, you can trade in those two hundred Pokemon as well, though. That's a good thing. I think that's great that you yeah, can yeah. trade them in. I think that's really, really good. Like, I'm happy that they allowed for we- that to happen. We've seen this with the whole Pokemon Home thing, and they were trying to do this whole. I, I think they do have a plan and a vision to connect all the games together in some form because that's obviously what mm. Pokemon's all about. You know, they yeah. they still have yeah. that value very close to their heart, the Pokemon Company and Nintendo, and that's always good. They're not straying far from that. Um, the the other argument is yes, sixty dollars for a game and then thirty dollars on top. It's a lot, but these people go out and buy. I mean, these. I'm saying these people. Like I've done it as well, and you've done it as well. You know, it, go out and buy both versions of the game when it comes out, and then you buy like the the ultimate edition at the end or whatever, and you buy like maybe the rematch. Like this is people that will buy into that franchise no matter what, and it's really bad to say that because that's obviously like not. You you don't want to look like you're just sort of making people buy stuff for the sake of it but these people really like the series um and also those those ultimate games were basically the dlc back in the day anyway like for each generation there was always that you know platinum or uh emerald stuff like yeah, that but you know that's what i always thought that was really wrong like mm-hmm. pokemon to, to be honest what could we really do because there was such a lack of information about game development and what was actually what additional changes were actually made to the game that I think back then it wasn't really stipulated whether or not it was a brand new game or whether it was just like a re a rebrand or a repack of the game like I I don't like now that would have like Emerald would have been labeled clearly as a remaster do you know what I mean like it's, whereas it's probably, then it wasn't like it's probably the only time that Nintendo's been able to do DLC on something like a Pokemon game as well. Because if you look at it, like, yes, it was on the DS and stuff, and it had the ability to do certain things like that, but yeah, no one would have... It wouldn't have been a viable decision for them to do that. Whereas now, being on the Switch and being able to just install the games you know, straight off or whatever and use it on your TV, like, the ability is there to do that, and I think they've definitely yeah. thought about it. Well... Um, a Mega Sun and a Mega Moon was bullshit, and like X two and X one and Black one, like that was all dumb. Like I didn't really think that was great at all on Nintendo's part to release the same game again, like just in some type of extended version where you get like what five extra Pokemon or something stupid or like an extra mission. I just thought it was really dumb, like when they did do that in the first place. So the again, like it's it's more than just like a few little things. They they do make big changes, like um to the game to some degree for for things like that and you do get a different experience obviously no matter which side you play because you know the earlier games if you had uh you know red or you had blue you'd only get certain pokemon in certain games oh i'm 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 not, I'm not talking about i know i know i know about that obviously i know about the color different differentiation i know red and blue gives you different things and you know you've got different paths in the game and different things happen to you and whatever different battle scenarios I'm just talking about when they did like Omega and stuff like that. I'm talking about the future of like the Pokemon games when they started doing. They didn't start bringing out new titles. They just started rehashing a game that only came out a year ago and, you know, selling it for the same price again and not putting much else into the game. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I just thought that was a really shitty business model in the first place. And then, like, now I feel like Nintendo's just like, oh, okay, well. We have Gen Eight. They're acting like that. I this mean, game, this this game took us, took them so long and so it was so crazy to make that they couldn't possibly come up with a new game now. So we're just gonna keep putting DLC on and adding the Pokemon back into the game. I just, 
I don't. I, don't. I just, I just don't really know how it's gonna go. But I think that's what they're gonna do. Like that Nintendo Direct was weird. Like I don't know if you got around to watching it or anything like that. But I just checked out the details. It, I, it, it just wasn't. Really it, wanna... it, you could see that they were like, kind of like, oh, we know that you wasn't really happy with the, you know, the general, you know, with the game coming out and you know some of the things in the games weren't as great and effective as it could have been like the animations and things like that like you know we, we could have done better on that like but it's typical nintendo you know the pokemon fans are so it's such a strong fandom that no one even really cares that much and it's just how things go these days so that's why i'm not gonna really care that much anymore because if you're gonna get played you're gonna get played like this is the first expansion pass of probably many so We'll see how many $30 they get out of everyone. I mean, to be fair, I, I will back this up now because th- there is a lot of content coming to that stuff. Like, it's it's not just nothing. Like, you do get a lot of stuff there. Um, yeah, the, the other thing is, yeah, it, the, Pokemon is a shitty business model. It always has been. It's about collecting them all, and every generation you add 200 new sellable things onto the franchise, and in turn you then reproduce everything from the last generation and sell them all on again and, and people buy it because why the hell not like it it makes its money off merchandise more than it does games and that's the whole yeah. reason that that that's that's that franchise was created in the first place that's that's a, that's that's a given with everything you think people make the most money off their oh, software yeah. no it makes the most money off their merchandise like toys that's what's the big money maker. It doesn't matter that Disney didn't own the the friggin' film rights to Spider Man. They own the rights to the toys. Like that that was it. Like you're already done from that point on. That's, Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's that's something we can have a, a nice in depth discussion on at um some other time because it's very detailed of what's going on. Um but I just wanna say before we move on to uh, the next thing, um the the Nintendo Direct as well about Pokemon. Um you talked about sort of rehashing old things. They are bringing back Mystery Dungeon DX this time. Uh, brand new sort of art style. It, it does look very good. I will probably pick that game up more than the main game. Just because, why the hell not? Like It, it looks like a fun game to just play you know, in, in your spare time without having to put too much effort into it. I, I, would, I, would, say, I would say at the moment, like, Pokemon is game freaks. Like, actual, like baby because i don't know if you noticed or not but game freaks other project um town or whatever it's called came out and it wasn't very well received at all so um people people said it was a good game i just think no one really cared about it yeah no one really received it the the game just didn't get very well received like it, it got it got it was like yeah it was a good game here and there but everyone kept saying that it was just a, it was a clone of like a certain other game i don't know if it was mother or like earthbound or one of those like but they said that it was very similar to something that's already come out and they were just like they, they had no idea why game freak decided to do this so like um i think game freak is obviously nintendo's told them you're back on to just making pokemon content now so they had their chance to try and break free from the mold and it never happened there's just a little thing that I just seen the other day about that game because I remember hearing about it and I never heard about it ever again. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, yeah, so do you want to get into... Um, yes, yeah, so well, we've got speak, a couple speak, delays anyway, a couple delays. We can, we can speak about games that we um, heard about and may never hear from again. Um, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is one of them because no one's heard from that. Um, and That's obviously, definitely I, a next-gen release, I feel like, yeah. Yeah, which which next gen the this um, this next gen or the next gen after? The next gen after is going to be the cloud. So there is there is nothing after that. Um, yeah. So so basically, uh, Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven has been delayed until September seventeenth. Um, it was meant to come out in April, but it has been delayed due to quality reasons and investors not being able to sort of be guaranteed uh quality from from this which to be fair it, it's understandable it, it what has been coming we first heard about this game in 2014 13 um it's now 2020 
we only seen gameplay footage of this game, a limited gameplay footage, late last year. So it's not surprising that with the release date of April, it's been delayed. Spe- especially considering the um, technological advancements they're meant to be making in this game as well. Uh, do you, are you? I can't think of a, a word. Uh, I was going to say, are you sort of you know surprised about this, or or do you feel um, in the same boat? We we sort of had I'm, a little discussion off air. I'm not really surprised about about like about it, but like at the same time, I'm a little bit like taken aback because. Not really about Cyberpunk 2077 because this game is taking so long to develop in the first place and the nature of the game itself is far more impressive than we've we've seen from a game for forever. Like Death Stranding really blew me away like when it first got revealed and the gameplay and playing it. But like Cyberpunk 2077 is like another one of those experiences that just looks like I, I I don't really know what it's gonna feel like until I play the game because we've seen mm-hmm. so little of gameplay and we've seen so we've, the thing is we've seen a lot of gameplay but so much of it is subject to change and they always put that like screen up at the beginning of each gameplay saying that this is like early access alpha like footage like this is going to be so different in the future game like you just don't know what to really expect out of this product so. I th- to I know that it's of, going to be carry on. I was just about to say to th- on on your point. I think sort of the problem with this is that they, it keeps changing during development quite a lot. Um, even people that have seen stuff on the inside keep saying like it's a bit different to how we've seen it, and they say that there's so many playstyles, so many customization, no loading. Like there's a lot of stuff you're trying to cram into something quite small. And like you said, we don't really know what the final game is going to actually you know look like or involve and it it could end up being i don't want to say this because i have big uh hopes for this game but i i do feel like we could have a no man's sky on our hands oh um especially considering they've announced their multiplayer is likely not going to be playable until after 2021 yeah, but I gotta respect CD Projekt Red for being uh, transparent with mm-hmm. the with the consumers. Um, real stand up studio right there, and I'm just glad that they have come out to try and explain to people what's going on rather than leaving us in the dark. Like, think about a great example, Tom. Crackdown Three. Wow. Look at how many fans were left in the dark about that game and then it just released to utter shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, at least if the fans were told that this game is going to be released in such a state, they wouldn't be so upset about it. Do you know what I mean? Or, or we wouldn't be looking at the game like, wow, it took like six years to come out and it looked like this. Like, what the hell? Like, something obviously clearly went wrong there. And... um Cyberpunk 2077, as I said, uh, it's been worked on for so many years. It's It's been in the works since Witcher 3. We've seen this, the concept art for this, like, such a long time ago. What's a few more months to wait? Um, that, that's great. That'll give me time to clear my schedule. And, um, yeah, hopefully by the time it comes around, you know, we'll have a polished game. The only thing is I'm a little bit, not worried about, but kind of a little bit, upset about is about the whole you know developers will have to crunch to some de- some degree mm-hmm. despite the delay and i just thought that was a little bit like you know had me looking a little bit kind of like you know puzzled about that because i'm thinking well we've got the delay like i don't really know why you have to still put pressure on the developers to crunch like and this was an issue anyway before because i'm cd project red were underneath you know heavy fire because they had um Oh man, there was a story that came out where they apparently something to do with work conditions. Um, I'm not quite sure. I, I'm, I'm, am I off on that, Tom? There was something that came out, right? Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. A long, I, I a I long, 
a long time ago, CG Project Red was in trouble. I remember because I was quite, again, shocked because I don't expect it from them. I I can't re- I I can't recall anything. I think they normally are pretty good. I think people may have been sacked from separate divisions, but it's not related. But I can't recall them anything towards the scale of uh, Rockstar or something like that. Um. Again, like you say, like it's it's good they're being open and honest about this. the The only problem is you, you're delaying the game so much. Basically, next to it's coming out right next to next gen now. Um, oh yeah, the, sorry, sorry. Yes, it's 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 true. Um, sorry, there was like several complaints from former employees or people who worked there. Um, backstories about how um the crunch was really intense to to get the witcher 3 finished and out uh, and then that really ruined a lot of people in the end like mentally so um mm-hmm. yeah i'm i'm just hoping that they are going to manage with this differently seeing as you know it's very important and we always talk about how developers have so much stress on on top of them to finish a game let alone such a highly anticipated game and i see where you get the parallels with no mind sky because that was such a hyped game of our gen, like that was really, really hyped up, That's, and it's, it's the only thing I worry about the the fact that this game's been coming out for a long time. It looks incredible from what we've seen, and it's promising a lot. But also, if you do look at the footage we have seen so far, it doesn't look drastically different to other games we've seen, like. That's the only problem that I'm I'm seeing is that it is a really good game and there's no doubt and it's going to be a good game. But the problem is when something's hyped up so much for so long and promises the world to a degree, people sort of people who don't understand the technological side of things will get carried away with that and build it up to be this thing in their head that they think is going to be the best thing ever. And when it's not like with No Man's Sky the gaming community and you know pe- people in general now um, want things instantly and want things good instantly and if it's not there straight away and isn't what they want then the backlash is not even like I was going to say incredible that's the wrong word the backlash is horrible it's, uh, it's unhumane to a degree sometimes like and especially if you're a developer or someone that's worked really hard on this project for seven years of your life you know, worked stupid hours to to get it done out the door, and you think it's good quality, and someone goes, "This game's really shit." I don't know why I've paid forty quid for this. They should go kill themselves. You just think, well, like number one, the people that are saying that they don't care. They're just saying it because that's just like it's the over entitlement of our you know society, our generation these days. Um, but they, no one thinks about how that affects the people that have worked on it for this long. And like you said, if people are doing crunch and have that mental health uh, problem from doing all of that, you you have to think about the long term effects of of stuff like this. And it is worrying. The only thing that I will say is that both the next gen consoles are confirmed to be backwards compatible. So it does mean. The life uh, lifespan of this game is gonna be longer than, than than what it should be because of that. Well, we're seeing a well, we've seen a lot of interesting things coming out about next gen over this past like couple of weeks. You know, we've got the whisperings about how basically neither Xbox or PlayStation's first party titles will be like exclusive to the next gen consoles that meaning that would they would either be released on pc or some sort of other system so meaning that the previous xbox and the previous playstation will also get these games so it's coming like we've not hit a roadblock but we've nearly hit that limit now where you know we always kind of joke around and kind of like theorize that you know consoles will probably be gone 
by the next generation now so i just want to know like how do you feel about you know these and i don't know if you've actually seen this because it's not on our notes but i just thought we should mm-hmm. maybe discuss about you know first party exclusives i can i can send you through some information right now uh, i think about it i don't know if you've seen it on the internet or anything like that or if you've seen it on twitter yeah yeah no i've i've uh i've seen the, the stuff going around obviously it's, it's quite big with um with what we want and um i think that it while not necessarily they're exclusive to the uh console i think they'll be exclusive to the platform as such so whether that be in game pass or ps now um you know you can only access playstation exclusive games through ps now on pc or playstation uh yeah. or you can only access xbox exclusive games through game pass on pc or xbox I think that's the direction we're sort of heading in. So I don't think it's going to be necessarily exclusive, like we we like we're used to be exclusives, where it's exclusive only on one piece of hardware. But it'll be something more akin to like the Epic Store on on PC, where it's exclusive to that store. Mm-hmm. Oh, PlayStation Five controller has also been like leaked fully on the PlayStation France. Uh, website and that is compatible with the PlayStation 4 as well Mm -hmm. I also heard a really interesting rumour that that might be called the DualShock 5 apparently who knew damn who actually knew nah that's just of course it was going to be called that like I I don't really know what else you're going to you're going to call it but um, yeah the Xbox um, the new Xbox won't have any exclusives till 2022 um, at all. So that means Halo is not going to be a launch title and um, the PS5 will have exclusives at launch. But those won't be full exclusives though. They're going to be either multi event- exclusive. Yeah, yeah. They're going to be multi eventually. Um, I think Xbox have shot themselves in the foot again. They've got all these first party studios. Mm-hmm. Why have they not set games up for the release of their new system uh, the pro- why are they doing this again the problem is when they there's a lot of things that come into it time frame when did they buy the studios how how have they got what have they got to, to bring to it and yeah it's still stupid they should have done something but technically you don't know if, if exclusive just means like it's going to be exclusive to the Xbox or they're classing exclusives as something that's exclusive to Game Pass, so it can be on you know PC and Xbox. Now, well, this what 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 the, this is what they've actually said. This is the actual statement. So Xbox Series X first party games will also play on the Xbox One for a while at least. So that just means that the pay, the PlayStation Five will have some sort of act, aspect of an exclusive that you can't play on a back on, a, on another system. But the Xbox won't until 2022, which is when they're probably going to stop supporting the Xbox One. Did you see what I mean? Yeah. It it doesn't really make sense because it really means you can just play it anywhere, which is what Xbox is. I thought that that was going to be their Mm -hmm. new approach to games anyway, this whole Xbox Play Anywhere. Like... Um, you know, play it on PC, play it on your Xbox, play it on your here's, your old Xbox. Like, here's the thing: to be to be fair, Xbox is not it's not a bad business model. You're you're releasing a dedicated piece of hardware that can play games or new games, next generation games, uh, the way they're meant to be played. You know, at the, the the right quality, lower load time, stuff like that. Fair enough. People, people, a lot of people would buy that because they don't want to spend the money on a PC because it's much more expensive. Um, they're also, if they're doing stuff on Game Pass, like we've seen releasing their games at launch through Game Pass just there and then, um, you're going to be seeing that on PC. So PC gamers will have the chance to play all those games. Um, and it means you sort of get the people that will buy a PlayStation but have a PC as well. So me, for example. Or, or you um, yeah yeah, yeah. So, so I think they know they're not going to win that that war um, and I think I think that's where they're sort of going with that 
and just leading on from that uh, i have some statistics about the best selling stuff of 2019 and the decade in general around gaming and the best selling hardware for the decade was the playstation 4 so if you look at like probably what the best selling hardware was it was probably the playstation 4 then the switch and then maybe like the ps3 and the 360 so xbox sort of knew it was losing that race i think and they've I think they've, I they've think started the to decade. put a lot of their eggs into that Game Pass basket. I did, I did see, I did see that stat actually. Yeah, it's a PlayStation Four. I think, I think the Xbox One was number two, you know, and then it was the 360, which is really weird because I just thought it, the Switch or whatever would have outsold it, but like it, it, it has, it hasn't because the Switch has only been out for like three years, in it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's probably very close after three years, but yeah. Um. It's pretty. It's probably not. But it's. Um, I wouldn't be. Su- I wouldn't be surprised about the Switch because the Switch does sell very well in it. But, um, well, the Switch was the best-selling hardware platform for December and 2019. So it, it was the best-selling hardware of 2019, and has been the best-selling yeah. hardware for it for a, a decent while now. But I say, like but say, the 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 PS4 still has a way to go to like beat. It hasn't even got to the PlayStation Two yet, which is 155 million. Like, mm-hmm. wow! And like, we also I, rem- have- I remember the PlayStation. The PlayStation Two's like sales were like, I think that is their biggest selling. Yeah, PlayStation Two is the biggest selling console for PlayStation. Yeah, and we also we also have to remember here as well. Um, just pointing out that these statistics for these console sales, so PS4 or Xbox One. They also take into account like anything underneath that or on top of that. So the PS4 Pro, Xbox One X, uh, you know the slim version, like, stuff like that. Like all the rehashes of stuff like that, they all take into account. Even though technically the PS4 Pro and Xbox One X are iterations on that console, they're still classed as that same. Uh, Was it like lifeline of the console? So yeah. it, the fact that the PS2 is just outbeating that anyway because they they only made like the ps2 slim they never made the console any better like the fact the ps2 outsold that still is it just shows how how good that console was in its day yeah um for sure yeah just just quickly then uh so sort of december's best-selling games we had like call of duty modern warfare star wars jedi fallen order and all the all the typical stuff pokemon in there uh, Minecraft's still in there, weirdly enough. Um, best-selling games of 2019. Uh, so again, Call of Duty, NBA 2K20, Madden NFL, Borderlands 3, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Smash Bros, Kingdom Hearts 3, Mario Kart, stuff like that. As always, um, it's most... all typical. It's all typical average games that like yeah, people yeah. all know now. Like, but, do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not surprised you... that Borderlands and Kingdom Hearts 3 is in there because. Are you ready the, for the uh, the best selling games of the decade list? Because this is a surprise. Yo, I'm not, I'm not. I'm looking at the list already, yeah, and it's not a surprise to be honest. <laughs> seven seven out of ten games of the decade on the best selling list are Call of Duty franchise games. Yo, yo, and I will explain why. Because every year that Call of Duty came out, every single boy in my school had the game. Every as soon as it came out on launch, and will not come to school. Like they'll be sick that day. That game must have sold so many copies. I'm surprised FIFA's not on there. I was surprised as well, to be fair. But I, it sort of lost its. Uh, I don't know actually in the decade. But then again, like y- y- sports games would never really make the best games of the decade because y- Call of Duty is. It's a game anyone can play. They don't have to have any relation to the, the source content. It's just a gun and war. Like, come on now, can... Tom. I know, I know, I know, man. That don't even know how to play football. That play FIFA. <laughs> yeah, but you, you're gonna you're gonna get a lot less people doing that than picking up an yeah, FPS. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's for um, sure. That's for sure. Yeah, the, the the games we said on there: Grand Theft Auto Five, obviously, which was a really good game. Um, again, though kept selling because it kept being ported over to literally everything 
Mm. Um, not not as bad as Skyrim, but it's getting there. Um, and also the multiplayer aspect, which is still very big now, um, that helped keep that game alive and sell really well. Yo, uh, Bethesda, fu- Bethesda fucked up, man. Like, how how is Skyrim not on this list? Like, they did all of that, and f- what for Minecraft to beat them? <laughs> it pro- it probably sort of uh, falls under other stuff just well, just yeah. just under like other yeah. red dead red dead 2 is like one of the biggest scams in the world like we all got scammed into buying that game uh that's that's why it's on that list we did we all got scammed every single one of us got scammed tom like tell me a person who plays that game now no one here's the thing as well the new call of duty modern warfare which is getting really good reviews isn't on the best selling games of the decade obviously because it came out two months before mm. but they're they're looking at eight out of ten games, like plus you had Modern Warfare two, which come out just before. So you, they, yeah, they they, 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 they did it. They did it in still. It's, if, if you're I, I hate at the best selling game franchise of the decade. It's Call of Duty. It's Call of Duty. Hands down. Of hands down. Call. But who's to argue with that? That I can't argue with Call of Duty being the best, hands down. Like it is what it is at this point, isn't it? Now, like we knew Call of Duty was impactful. I can, I can argue with it being the best quality wise, but I mean sales wise, I can't argue with it. No, it, it is, it is, and I might get some heat for this, and I might get some smoke for this, but it is the doom of the generation of our generation anyway, because it is Ooh. an FPS that was created and got seriously popular and was easy to play and has mass phenomena and had mass fandom around it. Doom changed the game. Call of Duty kind of, I don't know, commercialised it. In oh, a yeah, sense. Yeah. Well, Activision do what they do best and just... Consume. Market, market to yeah. everyone and everything for, for no reason. Do you know, do you know that they own King, Candy Crush? Yes, does not surprise me. This is this just, is Activision we're talking about. They're disgusting. Bobby Coltec is disgusting. Blizzard, we we haven't forgot about Blizzard. I I still ain't playing any Blizzard games. Like screw you, Blizzard. And I uh, like Call of Duty. It, I can't believe it's been so concurrent. Like I, when I'm looking at this list, like Black Ops Four, Black Ops mm-hmm. Three, Black Ops One, Modern Warfare Three, Ghosts. Oh not, my god! Not even like this is the point where. Call of Duty was being said that it was like not that good as well. Yeah, I know. Some of these games on this list are like some of the considered some of the worst Call of Duty games. And the worst selling Call of Duty games. A bit crazy. Yeah. Like, really is. It's just, it's just something to like think about, isn't it? You gotta think like, you know, we're not the we don't represent everyone. You gotta think like everyone goes out and there's like there there is probably about sixty percent of gamers that really do only buy about four games for a year and they would just play those games and wait for those four games to come back out next year Mm -hmm. Um, speaking about sort of things not being for everyone we've got one last thing to talk about 60% Um, is a bit of a a mad a mad stat I don't mm -hmm. think it's 60% I have no backing for my information carry on Tom (laughs) well yeah it's it's right we've got one more thing to talk about Um, something Tyrell is very interested in he's already signed up for this um, and that is that Epic Games has announced a partnership with TikTok uh, <laughs> to give players a chance to create an official Fortnite dance emote. I was, I was going to be like, what do you mean I've already signed up for this? Like, signed up for what? Like, uh, no. Yeah, if, if, you, if you find the Tyrell's, Tyrell's fake Twitter account somewhere catch, on the internet. You know? catch, me doing, catch me doing the Futsal Shuffle 2021 on TikTok. If you want to yeah. really want to see some dance moves now, like um, and and if both... if you if you win that, you get the amazing prize of twenty five thousand fee bucks, uh, a Fortnite prize pack with over four hundred in four hundred dollars worth of Fortnite toys and swag. That's it. I'm telling you already, yeah. If if you win Kid, the world kids, championship, kids, kids, people, guys trying to get on, dudes, anybody, uh, what? Don't, 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 don't make up a crazy sick dance for Fortnite and let them give you 2,500 V-Bucks. Don't let them do that to you. uh, I have to point this out as well. Players must be 13 years or older to enter the contest, which begins on January the 18th and will run until January the 24th. 
Players must also use a pre-selected Fortnite track in their submission, which can be downloaded what? on the official Fortnite website. What? No. Just... Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're basically, basically what, they're, what they've done here is they're getting around ways of stealing dances from these kids. Like, they're getting around it so they don't have to go through the whole legal rigmarole like they had to before where, you know, they stole all these popping dances and put them in the game. You can't... I mean, it's a bit of a sellout, like like you just said. If you imagine you've come up with this dance craze, right? You go, oh... You know, I'll, I'll, you, you know for oh, a fact, yes, Tom. My, my dance is in Fortnite. What do I get from it? 25,000 V-Bucks. What does Fortnite get from it? About £3 million a year. Not even that, man. Way more than that. These emotes make them... How it must make them so much money, these dances. Like, think, like, think of how many V books you can buy with that money. Jesus, like, Probably honestly, yeah, on, on, honestly, like, please, anybody who wants to protect themselves, like, do not just don't hand your dance over to it because you, I know I've had to reread the T's and C's. Can, can, I, can I point out anyone that, wants to, anyone that wants to protect themselves, don't use TikTok, just yeah, just don't, <laughs> just don't do anything like this, like. I know if you look in the terms and conditions of this kind of like challenge, you're gonna know that Fortnite is gonna own that dance forever, and you can't ever sue them for any money. I bet oh, you. Yeah, that's that's the point in it. Like you gotta download their official track. It's a trap, everyone. It's a trap. It's a trap, everyone. Don't don't do it. They're trying to steal dance from you, from all you you new kids. Like don't do it, man. Make your own videos online. Use Trilla. Make a dance video to like the baby or someone. Like just don't. do do. Just, just don't use TikTok. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm just hoping that people stop doing this because it, it's not related to anything we're talking about normally on the show. But it, it's, it's just quite bad that big companies are, are not forcing people to do this, but obviously like pushing younger kids, uh, people yeah. that are in that age to sort of just put random shit online at that age because it, it, it will come back and haunt you later on. Like, like thirteen and over. That's crazy, Tom. Like, remember when we were like kids, like. We had to ask our parents for permission to do shit like this. Like, you know, like, what, well, what, why? Like, a thirteen-year-old kid can just record himself doing a dance, and next thing you know, he's in Fortnite, and his parents had no knowledge of this. Yeah, that is true. But, but he's, I, I, he's, he's technically not in Fortnite. His dance moves are his sick yeah, dance but, moves. Yeah, but his parents might be like, "Yo, you should have consulted us. Yeah, we could have got you the bag. Like, we could have got you money from this instead." Like, also, Fortnite streamer, like, Ninja, didn't know he was still relevant. Like, he's in, um, he's been brought to Fortnite as a Ninja custom skin for hmm. some reason. They're doing an Icon series now, where they're bringing in people that are, like, influencers into the game of skins. Icons? <laughs> this, this is, uh... Who's Icons? There's no Icons in that game. Who is an Icon? Oh, my God. You have to put Drake in there and Travis Scott then because they were the one who put this game, like, on the map I, at that point. They did not put the game on the map. Nah, they didn't put it on the map. I'm joking, obviously. But, like... This, we, but what icons are we talking about here, Tom? Who's an icon? I'm talking about uh, that kid, you know. Dancer kid. Katy Perry dancer kid. Flossing kid. You know, icon. We're, if we're you're going to talk about, about icons... You need to put two million there. Him actually doing the Millie Rock himself and paying his money. You need to put J- Block Boy in there for doing the shoot dance properly, not that crap shoot dance that they've got in there. And all these other dancers that they've they've stolen from, put them in the game properly, and put them as in as icons. Ninja is not an icon. Like I don't even know how he's even got relevance anymore. His views are going down. All of these other YouTubers, their views are going down. Ninja actually was supposed to go... I thought he was leaving Fortnite to go and stream Apex Legends. That's what I heard. So... It's whoever offers you the most money, isn't it? Exactly. Like, so... As, as Dave Chappelle once said. Coke and, Coke and Pepsi, same thing. Like, it's just whoever's paying you more. I, I, let's just get out of this. I'm getting a little bit more heated. I told you, 2020, we're leading with positivity. Yeah, um... Yeah, I mean, if if you want to join that contest, then don't. Um, <laughs> then don't. Then, yeah, don't. Um, that's just that's my opinion. That's um, our advice. We don't. If, uh, we don't want anyone to be caught if, up in this rubbish. If there's ever 
a better way to start 2020 with like a a more iconic partnership that you could have seen that will like span out what the next decade is going to look like i think fortnite and tiktok is probably like the number one thing like it, it, it's been coming it's happening and i hope it goes away very soon um and on that note we are gonna move on to films and tv bridging the gap between music and gaming 808s and joysticks.com and um you know, speaking about things that we hope go away very soon uh do little has just come out a film that you were very excited for no um, i wasn't no well, not, not not excited in the fact that you're excited <laughs> you're excited to see it fail yo i i you're gonna have to tell me about this because i didn't even know it was out but it seems like you have got a lot of information on this film uh i've not seen it but you know when ign gives a film a three it's a bad film like ign never really gives below a five or a six because they get paid to say these films are good but either people didn't pay them or it was just that bad that they they got paid and thought we're just gonna have to try and give it a three like i don't know um apparently it's the it's the worst film of 2020 it's it it's the first dud of the year (laughs) yo it's only the it's only like the 19th like what are we talking about here (laughs) apparently so um it's got 18% on Rotten Tomatoes already, which is horrendous. Oh, the thing is, it's got a really good cast as well, but it's, I don't know. Um, apparently, like, it, it just has nothing good in it. Um, there's not a lot to love, apparently. Um, this is this is quoting from IGN's review, which, again, pointed out they normally give average reviews and try not to slate people too much because it's IGN um, they said that you know, the film is barely that it's crudely stitched together with lazy fart jokes, glaring ADR and a cut that will make any scenophile cringe the cast is given little to do beyond collect their paychecks yo I'm not gonna lie let me just, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna peep I'm just gonna peep this trailer real quick because I just want to see what it what it actually is. Oh, have you never like, se- like, have you never seen the trailer? It, it's why it's why why it's am basically... I seeing like a dragon or something? Like what's going on here? Like I don't know. It's basically like Noah's Ark, but it like you said, like if you you remember the first Doctor Doolittle, Eddie Murphy yeah. speaking to animals, like yeah, it's cla- it's classic. You imagine that, but he's not a doctor anymore. It's like some sort of weird. A philosopher guy that goes out on this adventure on a big boat with loads of animals that you can see. Yo, yo, them. why do they keep getting Robert Downey Jr. in these 19th century fucking English roles? Like, he's not Sherlock Holmes all the time. Like, he's not even English. So, why do they keep putting him in these roles? I don't. Uh, Doolittle was never English, anyway. He was a. No, he, he was wasn't. A, he was a black American doctor who was funny. Who was funny and spoke to people and it was hilarious. And then then we had sequels and it was his daughter. And that was kind of cool still. Why have they done this? Could have just brought Eddie Murphy back. Like that's literally what he's he's making this they, comeback. They literally should have just brought Eddie back. Eddie Eddie could have done this. Didn't done a reboot, yeah, and made it made it so great and made it so funny and put it on Netflix and it would have been great. But no. Instead we've got whatever this is. Like I have no idea. Like, the, the, it's loosely the, based around the voyages of Doctor Doolittle. All right, so it seems like Doctor Doolittle, the original Doctor Doolittle, was a voyager. Who asked for this? Nah, I um, I prefer Eddie Murphy, but it's um, it's sad. Um, you know, Universal ended twenty nineteen with Cats. Oh my god! Yo, yo! I was supposed to, yo! I was supposed to talk to you about that as well. Like, have you heard about cats? Like, do you do do you know like about it? Like, yeah, I. To be fair, like, I I've not gone and watched it. Uh, 
I'm interested. I'll watch wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. You need to go and watch it, though, because it, it's currently going to get patched. So go and watch it before it gets patched. I'll get an unpatched version. It's cool. You sure you're going get, to get the unpatched version? Because it's not going to be released on Blu-ray. And, the, and apparently the unpatched version is supposed to be the... It's supposed to be the cool, sexy, horny version of it. Um, I don't know if I want to be turning it to the cinema by myself to watch the unpatched version of Cats. Yo, no, no, literally, um, I heard that it's really sexually charged. Like, I, uh, that's what I'm hearing about the film. I'm, I'm feeling slightly uncomfortable. I'm, I'm currently sat in the room recording this with you and my lights are on like a really, really bright red. And we're talking about the uh, unpatched sexual version of Cats. No, honestly, honestly, you type in cats in film, yeah, and apparently it's a lot of people keep saying that it's nah, really, I'm... it's really horny and it's really like sexually charged and like it's disturbingly like erotic for some reason. I'm like, what age yeah. is this film like supposed to be then? Like, I'm I'm alright. Like I, I seen James Corden enough uh, the Gavin and Stacey Christmas special. I don't want to see more of him. Like not. Yo, not sexually charged. Yo, I never want to see Jason Derulo as a CGI cat ever in my life. I never, I've never wanted, I've never wanted to see Taylor Swift as a cat. I've, ne- I've never wanted to you, see any of these things. You know what? Um, the soundtrack was not like good because Jason no. Derulo's on it. Jennifer Hudson does okay. Jennifer um, Hudson is a great singer, but she is. But I, she, I don't know she what she's do doing in this. The best performer song wise on this was Taylor Swift and. I'm not a massive fan of Taylor, but I I will say that like she she did okay. Also, um, I heard the story. I heard the storyline is absolute garbage. Like apparently, it's just that's Cats very hard. General. Yeah, I heard it's really hard to follow. I I tried to read up on Cats because I wanted more information. Also, it, we what, need to when it, what the unpatched version or the patch version. Uh, no, or do you want more the, the, no, no, no. I was actually reading up on the um the actual theater run of it like just to try and find out what it was about mm-hmm. because i have got zero information on cats in it like i heard about it for quite a while now the, uh, my girlfriend's into watching like like sometimes cats. she likes to go like theater and stuff like that but she don't like cats and shit like that she don't like musicals like and she's like i don't know what it is like it's a very weird play it, there was never really anything about it, it was just a, something different um but people i know uh some of my friends that that like it said that the film wasn't great, but he, like, the dancing was pretty good and stuff like that. Like, and I think that's like the that's the point of it. Like, it, Cats the musical was never for anyone, everyone, anyway. Um, but sort of mo- moving back to to Doolittle, the fact that that currently sits at eight percent lower than Cats, and you know they both have all star casts, but the fact that Cats was so mixed anyway, the musical. But then this this film is just like hated so much already. Like, it must be bad. It must be bad. And like this is no. this is this is Robert Downey Jr.'s first post Avengers from. <laughs> so it's not a good start. We might be seeing Iron Man uh, make a return at some point because yeah, God keep... knows God knows the career I... is uh, on the edge now. Honestly, honestly, that's starting to tick me off as well now. This whole everyone's confused and the, the mcu keeps getting changed and disney plus and i'm just like yo i just want to watch the films like i do, really don't want to have to have a whole schedule set up for how i'm supposed to watch the mcu now well because i just feel like that's what's gonna happen like i'm hearing lots of really like you know scary things about the mcu and i'm like yo i'm a i'm a i'm gonna keep it a bean I'm not checking for all the, those series that they're about to come out with. I might check for Blade, She-Hulk, and that's it. I'm not checking for Hawkeye. I'm not checking for One Division. I'm not checking for Moon Knight. I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing that. Like I'm, I'm not watching all these TV series so I can understand the MCU. It, uh, Disney Plus sounds like it's crazy already. I don't really know what to say anymore because... It just seems like I say stuff about Disney Plus and then they start announcing things and it's changing. So I'm going to just say, we'll see. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, sorry, there's, there's a, just a, a few quotes here 
before we we move on to to speaking about something a bit more positive um but i ha- i i couldn't not laugh at this um what is it some people are saying Doolittle is is worse than cats uh vox critic elisa wilkinson wrote this quote Doolittle is unconsolably bad <clears throat> not in a way that's fun or interesting if you want to go see that go see cats this is extremely horrible that's really really harsh but i mean apparently it's a i don't know um yeah somebody somebody is like somebody is definitely going to be getting it in the neck at, at, at universal whoever made these decisions is definitely you were going to hear in like cfo from universal steps down or so, something mad like something out of the blue like oh certain so and so like one of the head execs has stepped down from universal come to find out he greenlit all these projects <laughs> someone someone greenlit all these projects someone did it so somebody did this <laughs> Somebody did this. Like, I don't know who did this, but somebody did it though, Tom. Um, we're yet to find out because, boy, my God, Rotten Tomatoes has been relentless. Like, I didn't know, like, I, I love how Rotten Tomatoes is just, it's just like, it's still a thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, we still go to Rotten Tomatoes and be like, hey, that's got 0%. Yeah, it must be shit. <laughs> uh, it's a, uh... It's interesting, but there's bigger news at play here. Um, Not to do with Universal, actually, but to do with their competitors. Uh, Something you've just alluded on. Disney Plus changing all the time, changing a lot of things. Um, And they're they're now going to be losing the Fox part of 20th Century Fox in a big sort of rebranding task by them. So there's reports now that 20th Century Fox will now be known as 20th Century Studios going forward and Fox Searchlight Pictures which is like Fox's indie uh, side which which did a lot of good good movies um, yeah, is now going to be just going to be known as Searchlight Pictures however no, okay. no decision has been named uh, has been made yet regarding 20th Century Fox Television and Fox 21 Television Studios although I, this isn't reported, but I'd probably go along to say that they're just going to remove Fox from their names as well. Yeah, they said that because um, the main reason is that Fox is... They want to keep Fox um, just for Fox News and Fox Sports now. They just got, mm-hmm. That's going to be sectioned off into its own type of thing. So it's just Fox News, Fox Sports. Because I think what Disney are trying to do, they're trying to make sure that that's separate so they don't... The content doesn't get mixed with the news because we know Fox News is very notorious for being, you know, not very great as a news service for America, and you know it's quite right wing and can be quite supportive of you know Trump and people like that. So I think Disney are obviously trying to distance themselves, even though they still own it, they still want to distance themselves from Fox. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense. Um, can easily just start slipping this into like Disney now, like you know, like 20th Century Disney Studio or whatever. Like they could easily just integrate that into their lineup. Um, I did think I I thought for uh, quite a few months ago, I'm pretty sure we talked about someone said that this was happening, and we was like, oh, it's only a matter of time before this does happen. And, yeah, well, it's happened now, so yeah, uh, it's not really I mean, surprising. We, we... We've seen it with Disney anyway, all all throughout um, history. Uh, Dis- Disney, you know, released films such as The Sixth Sense underneath other studios and like other studios underneath Disney. Did it? Did it start yeah. on um, Touchstone and things like that, like um, Buena Vista? Like those, those what they they used to use those. Yeah, this two stuff like two that. two pictured. Yeah, Touchstone pictures and Buena Vista used to be used to like do films in it and. I just wasn't sure if they were still using those, but yeah, they mm-hmm. uh, they had I a ton we'll, of things. We'll start seeing things like um, Deadpool, you know, come out. It, yeah, it, it, it's going to be this 20th Century Studios. So it, it's technically a Disney film, but it isn't, and the you know, Alien stuff like that. It means they can still do this whole mature stuff, which they normally do, used to do, um, but it's not so much related to Disney in a way. Um, 
It also means if they put something on, say, for example, Hulu, you know, there's a category section, for example, and it says like Disney or 20th century, um, 20th century split off from Disney. So it it's still related, but people won't associate it to Disney. Yeah. Which is which is what they always want to happen because Disney is their family brand. It's the yeah. overarching company, but it's their family brand and everything underneath it is, is not meant is, to be that. Is 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 not is not included. Yeah. Um mm-hmm. I, well we we knew this was gonna happen anyway. It's just another thing. <laughs> Disney Plus I'm still not obviously fully sold on and fully in on and like I just still wanna see what how it's gonna go. But yeah, the streaming wars, um I say, I feel like I say it every single show. It is always heating up, and it's it's it gets bigger and bigger, and it it's it gets higher and higher, and the stakes are higher, and you know more people mm-hmm. are throwing around money. Like um, HBO now just brought Friends for five hundred and twenty four million for five years from Netflix. Um, Friends is shit, man. I'm sorry. Like I'm, I'm gonna keep it a bean. Ooh. It's shit. Like it is like it's not it's not five hundred and twenty four million pounds worth to it's spend probably, on it friends. Is, it probably is. People. No, no, it probably is. But friends is you can if you really want to watch friends. Like people go crazy. Like when it went to like left Netflix in America. Like, people go like if you want to go and watch friends, go and find that. Like it's everywhere now. Like friends is not that important. I don't care. They're talking about doing a reboot, but they said that. Um, the money isn't right. I was like, the only person who could be demanding any type of crazy money is Jennifer Aniston, or and David Schwimmer. Or, none, none of the rest of them are doing shit right now. They better take their Co- cool three million Co- and dip. Courtney Cox is doing okay. Yeah, Courtney Cox. But what is um, what's Matt LeBlanc doing? What's like? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what? Oh, yeah, because that's really going well for them, isn't it? Like. Is he even still doing Top Gear? I don't know. I don't. We know. ain't watched Top Gear since Jeremy and them left. I so think, let's just uh, you know, so, so let's just everyone let's just not lie. Like no one's watching Top Gear anymore. Like, oh no no, my my dad's watching the new Top Gear with Freddie Flintoff. He said right, it was Jesus good. Jesus Christ! I said I'd check it out. I'm still waiting the time to check it out. No, I'm still I'm still I'm still working on checking it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh um yeah i i don't i i don't really know i don't really know how how this is all gonna go really for friends and, and things like that like the streaming wars is always forever heating up and just mm-hmm. following on from that because i see that you've got some other things on the note uh yeah M- well um... M- mbc's streaming service peacock apparently um yeah yeah, the next uh, the next installation in the Streaming Wars franchise, which is uh, Streaming Wars: The Rise of the Peacock. This is long, man. This is just long. This is all long, man. I, oh, I found this oh, oh, really oh, oh, interesting. Oh. British fans, Brit Brit boxes out now. The ITV and BBC streaming service. Go cop that. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you already pay the government a TV license. <laughs> I know. Like, what? Why would you do that? Why would you get a streaming service to get a TV license <laughs> to use iPlayer anyway? <laughs> it's just the dumbest shit in the world. Like I, I can't make this up, man. I really can't make this up. Um, interesting thing about Peacock. Then is going to be debuting Wednesday, the fifteenth of April. Uh, it's going to support ad supported. And paid subscription whoa, versions. Whoa, this, this is the that's this is the weird thing about this, right? It sort of leads on from the your Britbox comment. Um, it's only gonna be available to subscribers of Comcast Xfinity X One service initially, or owners of Com- Comcast Flex devices, uh, and a wider release in July. Time to start at the the same time as the Summer Olympics. Weird. Um, so, how much is it going to cost? I, I hear you asking because you really are interested in this service that no one asked for. Um, subscribers will have several options. There's a completely free version, dubbed Peacock Free, that'll offer around seven thousand five hundred hours of streaming shows and movies, news, and live TV content. 
Okay, free. Uh, a more robust version known as Peacock Premium will debut with twice as much content at 15,000 hours. Um, the ad-supported version of Peacock Premium will be free, but only to Comcast customers. For everyone else, it's $5 a month to pay for something with adverts in. Makes sense, right? Surely, because yeah. it's not like they get money from advertisements. Um or the ad-free version of Peacock Premium will cost an extra $5 a month, so that's $10 a month to get the same thing that you pay $5 a month for, but without the adverts that they get money for. So we've got free, and then we've got ad premium, and then we've got premium, no ads. Mm-hmm. But, th- but wait, because it gets even better. NBC have hinted that future promotional partnerships may also lower the cost for subscribers. So... To lower the cost for you paying for an ad-supported version of their service, they're going to get advertisements. Wow. <sighs> it, it's like some people just cannot see through the bullshit, apparently. It, it's like they just sort of think that people go, oh, yeah, I'll buy that, but oh, well, I can get it for even cheaper because they're going to advertise it to me more and get paid more. I just, and I, and, I, and I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, cool. Like, it's the exclusive, it's the exclusive streaming home for like Dick Wolf, which is like all the Law and Orders and shit. So I mm-hmm. see where it's, I see where they're trying to take this. <clears throat> and you, does, does anyone you care get, about Law and Order? N- that isn't not, over the age I of think, I think I'm about to say outside of America Law and Order really isn't like it doesn't bang like that I, I know it's really popular in America and it's one of the longest running um, drama series now on, on TV yeah, but okay, so, so so my my family like Law and Order I like watching Law and Order but Law and Order's not too bad would would I go I'm gonna pay $10 a month to watch nah. Law and Order no nah. it's yeah. Law and Order no. Like you can see, you fuck me. You can put put that on yeah. Sky. And it's, it's it's on every it's on every day. Like somewhere, Turn channel like, five you can find it, it. any time between seven and eight in the morning. You know, seven on night to eight in the morning. Law and Order will be on there at some point. Yeah, Law and Order's on there. It. Go on Fox. Law and Order's on there somewhere. Sometimes, like find, some, find some... a random channel, like Channel Seventeen is probably on there. Don't know what something is Channel Seventeen, but it's probably on there. something. Will have Law and Order if you go on TV, like at some point point of the day, um, whether that be SVU, Normal Law and Order, or Criminal Intent, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med. Like these are all Law and Order spinoffs that are all on TV every day. So like, I don't really know that 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 right there is like quite interesting for like people who want to watch Law and Order all the seasons everywhere. That's interesting. Also, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon comes out three hours earlier on the streaming service. That's important and interesting for people who really like those kind of shows. No one's paying for that. Nah, Absolutely. three hours before they air on NBC it comes on like really late at night anyway. So what's the point? What? Why is it? Um, it's called the Tonight Show, not the Afternoon it, Show. Like it, it literally. <laughs> You sit down at the night and watch it because it's something that's on. You don't go, oh, I'm going to catch up on that. And then, and and the late night with Seth Meyers. I don't I don't watch that one, but that that one also premiere early as well. Um, apparently, Universal Films are going to be exclusively timed. So, eh, exclusive Cats, exclusive Doolittle. Look, it's looking promising. <laughs> I've got NBC. I've got NBC Universal are, are like a media company together now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You you also have uh, the newly announced MacGruber series because people want that. Um, so other, MacGruber. Other, yeah. MacGruber. What? Why? Mm-hmm. <sighs> but Gosh. but like like you said, the the main selling point of this is the. Oh, Tom. The, the, the Dick Wolf stuff. So you get not only Law and Order, but you get Law and Order SVU, Law and Order Criminal Intent, Chicago Fire. Chicago That's what I said. PD, I said. I said all of these Chicago things. Chicago Med. You get everything. That's what I'm saying. You get all of them. You get all of the Law and Order spin offs. So it's kind of cool, but. You know, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not waiting it, for it, though, Tom. Wait for it, it Tom. It, wait, wait, wait. It's, it's wait. the same thing. 
Wait for it. Wait for it. I'm not, uh, I know what you're going to say. Wait, wait for it. But there's also going to be a Saved by the Bell reboot. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were going to say that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're rebooting like everything they've got in their back pocket. Yo, yo, yo. But why are they actually getting like the old cast to come back? They're old as fuck now. <laughs> Why are you getting them back? You know, you know. I'd actually watch that if they're like all sat in a retirement home or like a job center, and it's like saved. I don't know. Not even saved by the bell at that point, is it? It's like saved, saved by something. Oh my gosh! Of course, they've got an, they've got a Alec Baldwin TV drama that they're gonna bring out. Oh bloody hell! Like, just can't think of any new concepts, can they? Like, what's this? Jada Pinkett and Rashida Jones. I'm 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 good. Um, yeah, um, Battlestar Galactica is going to be on there. Yeah, it's and it's going to be done by Sam Ismail as well, who did uh, Mr. Robot. So that might be all right. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing is DreamWorks Yo, Dr- animation oh, DreamWorks, is yeah. going to create original content for Peacock. However, they already make original content for like every other streaming service, so not really that important. And let's be honest, no one really watches half the stuff they make anymore for, for the streaming services. Mm. I'm being nasty, just saying, you know. Um, that's, actually, that's actually pretty sick that they're going to have all the Telemundo. I know, I don't know if you know what Telemundo <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, but yeah. All, all the Spanish language content, that's that's really impressive because people love that stuff. So, like, I think it's, that's it's pretty good. If you're Spanish, this is the, the streaming platform for you. This is... Yeah basically um oh a new it, original it, talk show as well from jimmy fallon why wow sounds really original um <laughs> <laughs> yeah there, there's there's an interesting documentary series apparently that's going to be called uh who wrote that which sort of gives a behind the scenes look at saturday night live's most important writers i feel like that is probably the most interesting thing on here um obviously you get parks and rec and uh the office Parks and Rec won't come until October 2020 and The Office won't come until January 2021 because of their deals with extreme and streaming services. They've got Thingy as well. Services. The Office reboot, apparently. Apparently is, is coming for... On, but that's terrible because the, none of that stuff should be rebooted. Um, and, you know, if you're really feeling like you're running out of content on this service, then don't worry because the real housewives of franchise is going to be on there. Woo! Oh, and and the Olympics. Oh, <laughs> they're, and... they're banking heavily on the Olympics because that's yeah. But they got out. they're gonna have Fraser on there Friday Night Lights, Bates I Motel, don't care da- about da- Fraser. I can watch Fraser on Channel Four every da- down- morning. Downton Abbey House. I forgot like things like Downton Abbey and House and that. They, they, that just doesn't come on in America like normal, does it? So like that. Dalton Abbey, we can catch that on ITV4 probably every day. Like um, Friday Night Lights, that's on Sky Atlantic for us. Like we have, see, that's the only thing. It works different in England. Like we viewed all of this content differently. I don't know. Some Americans might not have seen these series for years because they've just been taken off air. So I get where they're going with some of these classic series. But Fraser is just like Seinfeld. Like you could probably catch that anywhere now. Nope. I, uh, Bro- Brooklyn Nine Nine. Cheers. Everyone in the comments is saying the same thing. Um, basically, yeah, people aren't happy. Like, I think I think the the big thing about this that that we discussed earlier on the the pricing model of Peacock is the fact that they're charging you. They they're doing a free version. To make it look like they're really nice and giving it away for free, then they're charging you to watch more stuff with adverts, and then they're charging you again to just watch it. Like yeah, they either no, they they either know no one cares about them, or you, could, you got you, you just got you just got peacocked. What P- peacock blocked? As people are saying <laughs> in the comments, I just yeah. the, the, oh, I can't believe they actually called it this. This is terrible, man. I mean, to be fair, Pe- the the peacock is the long-standing mascot of NBC, um, and it makes sense. I I have no problem with the naming of it. I some some someone said fine. in the comment section that like we're gonna have all these stri- separate streaming services, and then like 
He said, like, wait, wait until, like, one of them, like, the major media company just comes together and just, like, buys them all and just, like, puts them all together, like Google. <laughs> like, Google, Google Media or something mad. I just mm. feel like this is going to happen eventually. We're, we're going to get to a point where everything's going to be split off and then we're going to pay for another subscription service to bring them all together. I, I wonder who's just, who owns more than one streaming service that always buys things. Hmm. 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 I know one person. I uh, yo, I'm not buying a Disney multi pass. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it, Tom. I'm not doing the Disney multi, but I'm not doing it. I'm not doing that. We'll we'll see. We'll see. Rather have rather have like Bezos buy it up. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. See, I with off topic, but I I really like Amazon's content. Their, their streaming service is shit. Service in general is terrible. Their content's really good. Yo, it's got their, bones their, on their, there. So yeah, no, I'm their, good. Their, 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 their service is really good. Their content in general is just bad. Like they, no, their content is good, but their service is just bad. Like if you want to watch something in 4K, you have to select the separate 4K version. You can't just select the same thing. Like I, I don't know. From for a company that has the best cloud web services in the world you expect more from them in it i expect i expect i know, I, 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 I work i work I, with their technology every day and it's very good it's very cutting edge but they i i don't know like don't get me wrong the actual back end of the service works fine it's just the front end stuff it just doesn't seem to flow very well compared to not, stuff like netflix it, it's like they just haven't really like put any i want to say they haven't put any work into like just making the animation and like just interface it should just be smoother than that i don't know exactly what you're talking about like when well, i use it on it's the playstation like a... it's on. a little bit more it, can, it it's like obviously someone's put in time to make it work for the playstation the playstation usually has good media apps anyway but like when i was using it on like say for example the pc um amazon prime just doesn't work very well on um i think safari or one of the mm. one of my browsers that I have, um, it just doesn't work. It just the video it will just crap out. It won't play properly, and I'm just like, what is going on? Like, a website shouldn't be like this. Uh, the interface is really trash. I click on things and it won't go through straight away. Like, it would take a bit to load. I'm like, wow. Like, it should really all be, you know, flowing. Like, it's the same with Netflix and I think the iPhone. Like their interfaces are superb like do you know what i'm saying like you've got a superb user interface that works very well and it doesn't fail it's very simplistic that's yeah. that's what's good so uh, amazon works if you use it specific ways if if you integrate with uh things like alexa i had to say that quietly because i don't want everything to turn on um if you integrate with things like you know their their voice the service that it works well because you can just search for stuff using that and it works you know the way they've got it set up as a store or a service as well because you can buy stuff still but they're yeah. they're focusing on this whole still being a store thing and being able to buy content there and while that works the problem is you lack that simplicity for everything that's available for for free for prime customers um and that's why Netflix has the upper hand because they show everything you can watch right there and then whereas sometimes on Amazon you don't know whether you're getting that or whether you can only watch that like for certain things and it just isn't as simple it can be but it, it just isn't but I, I don't know why we started discussing that I just felt like I needed to, to say that because they could be good but it, it I don't know. They they just don't seem to be doing the right things. Um, we have one one little thing left, um, which is interesting. Um, and as Quentin Tarantino has revealed that he's going to be directing uh, a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood spin off series called Bounty Law, which is based on the fictional TV show within the movie. I found this really interesting. Apparently, he's going to do like a. A limited series with five half-hour episodes, which he plans to direct. Now, which streaming service is going to buy the rights to this is probably the more important question we should be asking ourselves. 
Netflix will probably have the, the rights to this one. Just duly to the fact that they got the exclusive rights to his last film, um, The Hate for Eight, when they split it up into that new format. It was debuted on Netflix. The director's cut version. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking Tarantino already has an existing relationship with Netflix, meaning that he'll probably deal with them rather than somebody new. He wouldn't put it he wouldn't want to alienate his audience, so he wouldn't put it on one of these newer streaming services like <clears throat> Pe- Peacock. Peacock or HBO Max or No one's whatever. buying HBO and Max. Exactly. He's not putting it on um Disney Plus because that's just it's not the place for him. So I'm assuming that he's going to probably put it on Netflix or Amazon. That's the only two places I can think that he will be comfortable with putting it. Or it could get given in a totally different way. It could get given to um, like um, HBO, BBC views and um, plays it in England and um, America gets it on Hulu or Netflix or someone like that. But um, Tarantino is he's a quite an interesting guy. Um, he was saying a lot of things about when he was doing Once Upon a Time in uh, in Hollywood, and um, he was saying that it's going to take him about a year and a half to create um, all of these episodes. And um, I actually haven't really watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yet, so I think I really need to watch it to get like a better understanding of you know how this will go you know how how's this gonna go and you know five half an hour episodes um it's quite a lot uh for tarantino i didn't really expect him to do a tv series with five half an hour episodes like that's quite shortened down compared to um what he usually is used to which is long form films that are usually split up into you know one or two parts and um yeah he was talking about how once upon a time in hollywood as well the four hour um cut of the film may be released in a year's time as well Mm -hmm. so that's quite interesting and um yeah i think roughly that is uh that's about it on once upon a time in hollywood um Anything else? Um, no, I think I think you covered uh, most things there. Um, like you said, it, it's it's a bit sort of weird. He's doing half hour episodes, considering like most of the episodes we see now are, are normally hours, and mm. obviously he's already, mm. he's already done a, a four hour extended cut of you know Once Upon a Time. Um, so we'll just have to see what what happens um but yeah it's it's something that I'm, I'm interested in but i've not actually had the chance to fully look at um fully watch half of most of his films his recent films yeah um which oh is... oh Go on. just because our we're just on the concept and you know we're just talking about you know western themed films and that um westworld had their season three trailer um if you haven't watched it yet, go and watch it. Um, I'm not, really I've not watched it yet. No. I tell you what, I've, yeah, you, I've actually I'm... got Westworld season two in the back locker because I need to rewatch. I'm, I'm going to rewatch it all again. I think before the new one comes out, I've got it set up on my watch list. Yeah, um, I think that is that's about it really for this section. Um, I'm just going to move into music. <laughs> Bridging the gap between music and gaming. 808s and joysticks.com. And there's not really, just not really much. This, Whoa. This is, what do you mean? This, well, no, there's not really much. No, I mean, uh, there's not really much like music, super music news. Well, there is. Like, we can discuss some things, but there's not really much in terms of news. There just, there has been a lot of releases, though. I can say that. Mm-hmm. Um, Al- <clears throat> album of the decade come out. Um, surprise drop this was music to be murdered by Eminem um, quite literally what the title says uh, you know, if you listen to this music your ears will probably bleed very much um, so at, at least he's becoming 
I don't know, self-aware now, you could say? Um, I'm going I'm to jump in and, you know, this is a rare, a rare, very, very, very rare time where I would defend Eminem. But the intro, he actually really... He says some things that he it, it does seem like he is very self aware about what's going on in the moment. He starts talking about how, you know, um, people like Two Chains and Jay Z and how they're older and rapping and how uh, Eminem gets killed for you know rapping like this still and he's old and like if I was old like why am I getting killed so much for being old and stuff like that and like uh, I found it quite funny in my opinion because. I feel like Eminem is really disconnected from everything. Like he he's just a lyrical rapper who we don't see much of. When we do see him, it's an album. Um the album's pretty much never up to my taste or what I would like to listen to in my spare time. So I automatically don't want to listen to the album all the way through. I will skim through it. Just of just to the sake of the fact that Thank God I did because that Ed Sheeran song is god awful. Like yo, like I, I th- we need we need to stop this. Like yeah, Ed Sheeran linking that. up with everyone because it, it, it isn't good. Um, it isn't good. I I I would say I don't really know anyone that's listened to this album as such, apart from like a few people that I know are Eminem fans to a degree. Um, but everyone else, you know, people people that loved Eminem back in the day, no one, no one listens to this anymore. Um, because they've grown past it. No one, they're too busy listening to tech songs and house songs and shit like that. Like, they're not, no one's got like. Obviously, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a real shot. Still, I shouldn't have said that. But like, they're too busy not listen. They're not gonna listen to Eminem in this in this twenty twenty R day. They're too busy listening to fucking like. H and shit like that. Like they're not, they're not, they're not gonna be listening to music like that anymore, are they? Like taking shots at here. I think I'm taking shots at like generation, really, isn't it? Like that is like what our our music generation like seems to be really hung up on a certain genre and style of music at the moment, and I think it's quite hilarious to to in my opinion because like these would be some of the people who you would see be the biggest supporters of Eminem's music or you know certain music then they've totally abandoned that music and they apparently don't listen to that music anymore so mm-hmm. I, I I don't really know who is checking for Eminem in this point I think it has to be old heads yeah no it is it is um, I could definitely say that it, it is that we're becoming old heads we are becoming old heads there's some music that I it's, hear from it, the newer generation. And I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, 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 I'm like, this this is bullshit. But we'll listen to like Future and be like, yeah, this is sick. But the old heads, they don't like Future. Do you know what I mean? Like, but we like Future. I, I We relate to Future. I want to make this point now. Because it's, it's probably a good point to make right now. Um, y- You might not like it. And people that listen might not like it. But for me... Right now, in the current climate, the way everyone's listening to music, there's certain artists that people stand to a degree which is wrong, I think. Um, I think Travis Scott is overdone right now. I know Jack Boys came out, but like... Eh. Tra- Travis is untouchable right now. I was even talking about this with Jody. Uh, yes. The day, okay. So yeah, he about how he's he pulled. came out with that album, but it's just like, do you not think a lot of the stuff is very samey to a degree that's coming out from from a lot of these people? Like, th- there doesn't seem to be much change happening, and I feel like that's also down to the audience. Not necessarily just the artist, but the audience sort of just I, I, liking I can, anything that I can, comes out. I can say I can say that has been the precedence for some of the top top mainstream acts. Mm-hmm. I, I, I I'm not that. I'm not just saying that about Travis. Here. I'm saying that about like you know, no music no. In I'm uh, I'm I'm just saying yeah, top mainstream acts. Yes, Travis. No, because I think Jack Boys was. 
a different extension of his sound and a sound that he created at that. Yes, so I feel like he's yeah, allowed. Yeah. Oh, to, it's, it's his sound. He was allowed. He was allowed. He was allowed to do a project like that, and I think. Don, I think Don Tolliver really was supposed to be the highlight of that album Don, yeah. more than Travis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I Don, think he Don really... Don Tolliver, like that, to me, like, is... I like Don Tolliver. It's fresh. It's something different. I like Yeah. That. The, the problem is you've, you've got a lot of people... Like, Future and Drake's song, Life is Good. Good song that's come out, but again, it's like... Future and Drake... Like, it seems like you don't have to put a lot of effort in these days, and people will yeah, just sort yeah. of like the same shit because so yeah yeah i understand what you're saying like we'd... i think i think i think yeah but you, you know we can take that in all roundabouts like mm-hmm. whereas you know i'll use that in the example of you know has you know has miley cyrus made music that is an essentially good for a long time no like i've tried to listen to her music and it really isn't that great like that don't call me angel song was terrible from the charlie's angel soundtrack like that was from ariana grande that was really bad and it goes to say the same with a lot of people um who are at the top of their peak um you can tell when the machine is behind them and is is doing machine stuff do you know what i'm saying like <laughs> travis scott and no no, no but that's what i'm saying like travis scott i don't really see the machine there as much i just think that that trap sound is a sound that he obviously utilizes the auto tune. I get it all. I think, yes, some innovation can be done, but Travis Scott will innovate on his actual album. Astro World was something that was so fresh and new. We've never heard mm-hmm. that before. He will come back again on another album and change the game again. Rodeo, Astro World, uh, Birds in a Trap, all of those albums don't sound the same. Um, Jack Boys sounds like bonus tracks of Astro World. I will agree with you on that. Like I can yeah, say that, I, that, that I, he I, does. I don't think that's necessarily down to just him. I, I, like I said, I think that's down to the current climate of of music, as in listeners and streaming, how it affects. Them. Like I might say, it, it songs are getting songs will get played a hell of a lot more now because that's where the 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 sales come from to a degree. So yeah. you're gonna hear these songs a lot more than what you normally would. Um, you got you got to think as well. It's it's down to the fault of um, m- many mainstream pop songs now. Um, for some reason, they just think that they have to include 808s and a drum pattern, and that is to go to say with most. You know, you know, you got people like Halsey, Selena Gomez, Camila Cabello. These are the type of people who are trying to cross over and make these hits using elements from popular music like we know what's going on at the moment Roddy Rich beat Selena Gomez again number one for the box and apparently the album is also number one as well the numbers haven't been truly certified yet we don't know if he's done it again in his fifth week at that it just goes to show that we know who's buying what music and what music is being consumed the most and what is the most popular. Certain music in pop, pop is just popular music. Mm-hmm. Pop music right now is hip-hop. Hip-hop is a very popular genre. It is probably the most popular sound right now in popular music. So it's not surprising to see of you know the rate of music that's coming out and the sound and when you go on the other side of the spectrum and you got people like dreamville releasing things that are totally different like the dreamville yeah. director's cut was insane like I, I i like 11 more songs of fire and they're all different like, do you know what i'm saying like it was crazy it, it, it was really really i was impressed mm-hmm. and I, by that those 11 songs i haven't listened to it or, or it's really or good knew that there's 11 new songs but my point about this before listening to it and, and what you've just said um i'm still going to say the same thing uh even if that yeah, that's changed my opinion but the fact that do, did they need to re- release this as revenge of the dreamers three director's cut or yeah they did because we know we know how we know how streaming works these days isn't it tom like mm-hmm. 11 extra songs gets yeah, added yeah. to the album that boosts up the streams that's what but that's that's what, that's what i'm saying did, just, did it the game's need, the game did it need to be or was it just sort of done I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, like it, yeah, it could well, it could have been yeah, its own separate entity, like like ja- yeah, like Jack yeah, Boys it was its own separate entity. 
Yeah. It could have. I think, I think given the nature of, because you remember how the Revenge of the Dreamer sessions went in it, where they mm-hmm. invited everyone to the studios for like 30 days or whatever. I think so much music was produced in that time frame. They obviously thought, well, we'll release the album again. We'll do the director's cut. There must be like some kind of special vinyls and albums that are going to come out for this. There's probably even going to be a film because it's called director's cut. So there's probably going to be some sort of short film that's going to come out maybe after this about the recording process of this album. Um, Dreamville and J. Cole is very smart. He's been moving right with the label. Dreamville has been building themselves up to become quite the formidable label. And um, I think it's just a matter of time before... It's a matter of time before we see a shift in, sh- in sound. I feel like I see this, the shift coming anyway. We've got new projects on the way from from every major artist. Um, Drake always comes up with something formidable, no matter what. Do you, do, you know, um, do you know what I'm looking forward to? The shift in sound. Frank, tw- Frank 2020. See, yeah. See, what well, Frank was already doing something different with his sound when he was releasing the loose singles back um, last year yeah, with yeah, DHL but, and, you know. But you, like you said, you look at um, Channel Orange. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not just specifically saying this is this all on Frank, but Channel Orange really sort of pushed forward a little bit as well like what, how, what what people did how it changed and blonde definitely took that to a different sort of level um people really sort of took notice of that album and how, oh like, man production da- daniel you listen to daniel season's freudian and compare that to blonde it's basically a trap for trap remake of that album just with daniel caesar the outro sounds exactly like future of free like it, it okay not yeah, a trap okay. for trap remake yeah but, Dan- but Dan- daniel caesar the concepts yeah, Daniel C's are very openly, even on the album, he's very openly inspired by that album. Inspired and, by and Frank. Frank, and yeah. He yeah. even includes sections of the lyrics of Frank's on one of the album, on one of yeah, the, on one exactly. of the tracks. Fair enough, like you can tell the influence is there, and that's fine. But it exactly to me, it's still two very different things. But it's like the influence is there. That's that's good. That's what I like to see. Um, and you you saw maybe a little bit of influence with his second album then if you want to you want to go into that. Um, oh yeah, well that second album was just phenomenal. Like it didn't get as much play. Obviously, we know Daniel Caesar. Oh, no, he, it did. He made some made some bullshit comments, and he was he was wrong for that. He shouldn't have said those things, and um, that did cause a lot of that did do a massive hit to his image um, as a person. Nah, people I'd... couldn't really take him serious. I, I don't care. So, these these are the same people that are out here still listening to R. Kelly and shit, man. Like, get over yourself. Someone makes comments. So, like, yeah, nah, Tom, you can't say that. You don't know. You don't know the extent of the comments that he said. They were really, they, they. You shouldn't have said those comments. Like, basically, I'm not, you can't. I'm not, you can't go. You can't go around saying shit like that. And yeah, I'm well, okay. I'm think not that it's acceptable. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not like, agreeing with the comments. I'm just saying that, like, oh, are you just saying about these, how fickle people? These are the, yeah, these yeah, are the I same it, people yeah. that would be like. They'd be, they'd be driving around in the whip banging Chris Brown and R. Kelly and going like, yeah, and you're like, but like you, you, you're saying this shit about this guy who's made these comments, yet you're listening to like a pedophile's music or a, an abuser's music because it's cool. Like, mm. well, I, I know, it's, I, I, I understand. I, un- I do understand. Obviously, I understand that more than anybody. Like the moral, the moral, the moralistic problem that you have when you're trying to listen to an artist if they've said something or they've done something wrong i just took the daniel seat the daniel season project is really good i'm not happy with the comments that he said i think he he does obviously need to stand up for what he said or and talk about it but he's also a young guy like he's not very old and people say fucked up things in, when they're in situations and yeah fame is also different when you're that age so i get it but I also don't like uh, it's one of those things it, we could talk about this all for a while but there's no point um, but, but we have more yeah. more important things to speak about what? yeah well with the new album releases mm-hmm. uh, I would just get straight down to it uh, I haven't listened to it fully yet um, it's the it's the accompaniment album to Swimming which was um, Circles by Matt Miller um, a very a very concise um final 
um, album by Matt Miller, uh, collaboration with John Bryan. If you don't know who John Bryan is, uh, he worked with Kanye West, uh, worked with a ton of people, but um, specifically on Graduation, uh, John Bryan did great work on that album. Um, no, not Graduation, sorry, Late Registration. Um, he did great work on that album. And um, yeah, so this was made majority uh, of the album is made with him um rare by selena gomez not checking for it haven't bothered checking for it it's out there uh go get roddy rich <laughs> um, obviously you can talk you can talk about it you got back you, 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 can, you, can get, you can get you can get your shit off tom like is what it is isn't it yeah, i'd not listen I did, oh, I, just, I thought you was gonna listen. No, I, I listened to the singles that came out. Like, I, to be fair, I'm I'm not against Selena Gomez. I'm not like a. a I'm not against. Uh, I'm not against Selena Gomez. Like Some of the music is okay. I'll listen. Some of the music isn't. Like, it's what it is. Her fans are. Her fans are stupid though. Like, can't just be uh, going into everyone's comments. And... Everyone's fans are stupid, man. We could we could get into Beyonce stands trying to rip on Sainsbury's on Twitter because the the new collection looks like a Sainsbury's universe. Yo, 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 People, people out here I'm in going, the, I'm, yo, 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 no, 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 I'm in the beehive. I didn't say that. Tom Stone said that. I'm not, I'm not a part of this. I'm not, I don't want to be associated with the comments that this man is saying. Rightfully so, Sainsbury's should get ripped on. That's what, I'm agree with them. Nah. I'm not playing with them, Tom. I'm not playing with them. They're, they're like, they. I, I do understand. Yeah, it is, people, it is people, wrong. It was, it's people, supposed to be a joke in it. People are like, people out here tweeting saying she's going. Yeah, but Ivy Park collection still outsold. Like, yeah, what, what no, outsold Sainsbury's just, uniform? Okay, it's yeah, fan, okay. It's fan, It's it's fans in it. They're just they're all just weirdos. They're a bunch of weirdos. Like, you only have to sell one. Yeah. one no, 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 not 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 as not as not as weird as not as weird as your fans, Tom. The Beavers. Gosh damn! Still struggling to get that number one in it. God damn it! Yeah, got, <laughs> got, got number one R and B. Number one R and B. That means nothing. The song gets certified as pop. It's not an R and B song. Get out of here. First artist, get out of here. No, artist, just to be, but get out of first here. First artist of twenty twenty to get two number two two songs in the top ten. The top ten of what chart? Because it wasn't Billboard. I don't know. Probably not Billboard. I think. <laughs> No, it wasn't Billboard. The box is still number one. Yeah, not number one. Just top ten. Two top ten singles. Oh, wow, Tom, is that the is that the kind of stats that you you're all you're all grasping for now? I seen someone bring up he was number one on the iTunes the iTunes pop chart for three hours. I was like, what does that mean? Like, it was just... <laughs> yeah, I must say, um, that means nothing. That I, means I, nothing. I, just a, just the people's impact is done. I take in back, this take, decade. Take back my previous comments from earlier um if you do want to participate in that tiktok challenge feel free do it <laughs> oh gosh oh what to go on there i you gotta get that number I one got uh justin bieber's like mysteriously not got lyme disease anymore as well now he's full of shit man um albums again halsey halsey's all right i like halsey hey, mr muramasa ryc Oh yeah, Mur- I haven't listened decent, to Mur- decent project. Uh, I'm not listening fully. But. Album yet either. Um, everything else has gone wrong by Bombay Bicycle Club. That's that's your kind of man, them. What they're saying? It's a Bombay Bicycle Club album. I mean, it's what you expect. It's it, like it's like it's what you expect relaxing from them. indie music. It's just chilling. It's chill. Okay. Um, Eight Mile. Um, by Dig That. I've listened to a few songs. Yeah, it's, it's all right. Just a, a drill thing. Um, uh, we've already talked about music to be murdered by <laughs> Revenge of the Dream is free. Director's Court by Dreamville. 11 new tracks from Dreamville. It's quite good. Um, oh, this 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 one killed me though. Modus Revenge. Yo, it's fucking hard. Oh, 7 oh, seven, oh Shake. Yo, this project is it's like she's like a female kid Cudi. It's hard. Mm-hmm. It's it's too hard. It's too hard. Like she she killed it. This is what I was expecting. It's like it's like a how an album full of ghost towns. It's just sick. So sick. I, um I can back that up. Um yeah, singles, life is good. Um I'm sorry. It's, the song's fucking sick. I you know I'm just a Drake stan, like I, it was all what I needed in life. Like it was it was Drake and Future doing what they do best, talking about being rich. Um 
what else? I've got a few other things on here. Um, Mako Got That Flame by OG Mako and Lord Fubu. Um, they've got a collaborative EP together. It's quite good. Mm-hmm. Um, Seasons 2 by House of Pharaohs. That's a mixtape. We forgot Bebby by Theo Theophilus London. It's really good. Um, the whole album's out now. Um, Virgil Discount by True. Uh, that's 2 Chains Group. That's got 2 Chains in it. Um, that's a really sick song. Um, I don't think I've got anything else. Uh, there's Vanquish by by Popcorn. That, that album came out. Mm. There's, there's things like uh, Me and You Together song 1975 uh, goes back more to their roots. This this album, by the looks of it, um, their singles are coming out from it. Um, what a man got to do, Jonas Brothers. Woo. Um. Yeah, like you said, not not a lot's come out really. <laughs> really, like it's, so, it's dig, only the dig, first eighteen days of the year. Though. Really digging the bottle of the barrel. Oh, Thundercat with Steve Lacey, Black Wolves. Interesting. Okay, I didn't know that, that was out. Yeah, Thundercat new album coming out April fourth as well. By the way, I'm super fucking excited. Uh, and I will say as well, uh, Rina Sabanyama, uh, Comedy Garson. Uh, that's a new single by her. I I listen every now and then um, to to certain bits of her music. Hit and miss sometimes, but it, it's worth a listen to if if you can. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think that's mainly it. Um, there's other songs, but nothing notable that I I see that anyone would be interested in listening to. Um, us nah, like I'm look I'm wise. looking through all of. I'm looking through all of my stuff. I don't really see anything. Something to prove by Lil Baby. His new album's coming out very soon, apparently. Um, there's a bunch of albums that are going to be coming out at the end of January. So I guess we just wait for that. So uh, Tame and Paul is coming soon. 50th episode special. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, finna get out of here. Uh, also, I was right. Baby Keem is going to be next up for 2020. I did say this. If you want to go back and listen to the episodes. Remember, Tom, didn't I tell you about Baby Keem ages ago? Nah. He's getting up. What are you going to do that for? No, Yes, I told Tom about Baby Keem a long time ago. And now he's getting his notoriety and his famous. Drake said that it was his favorite project of the year. And uh, so he just is who manages Black and Summer Walker. So let's get it. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So I was... Uh, Airways and Joysticks. Hope you enjoyed the show. Shout out to Dash. Thanks to all of our supporters. Um, YouTube, Spreaker, uh, Spotify, Apple, uh, Podbean. We're, we're, we're even on places we don't even know about. Just search 808s and, and joysticks. You should be able to find us. Peacock. As usual. As usual. <laughs> might be on Peacock soon. Hey, you never know. Exclusive. Um, nah, I'm cool. Catch, ca- catch us on Twitter and Instagram. Um, as usual, we're working on things hard. We're trying to work on to get content out for you. It's a brand new year. Uh, focused, dedicated, ready. Thank you. Airways and joysticks. Peace out. and joysticks with Tom Stone and Tyrell Hayward-Brown.